Hey, I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain. Today we're in the shop working on our Yamaha Blaster and we need to get our clutch plates replaced. This is gonna be similar for model years 1988 all the way to 2006. And if you're not sure if you need to get those clutch plates replaced or not, some common symptoms of a bad clutch would be if you go to accelerate, but instead of going faster, the engine just revs up. Or the other thing you can have happen is the clutch drags and it won't fully disengage. So if it's not fully disengaging, you might have some issues with your clutch basket. But in either case, we're gonna show you how to take care of those problems. For parts, we went with the Tusk High Performance Clutch Kit that comes with the friction plates and the steel plates. We, it also came with some heavy duty clutch springs. Additionally, you're gonna need a clutch cover gasket and some transmission oil. We went with the Tusk Transmission Oil Change Kit that comes with your choice of oil and the necessary crush washer. And then to clean things up, we have some contact cleaner. And no matter what blaster you're working on, just make sure you reference your model specific service manual. To do this job, we're gonna use some safety glasses, rubber gloves, some rags, and some common hand tools. Now we will be using some digital calipers, a torque wrench, we have a gasket scraper. Those are the main things I wanna point out. Besides that, you're gonna to wanna to have a drain pan, a funnel, and we're also using a ratio right. We're gonna start out by removing the Nerf bar and the hill guard. So we need to remove this footrest and brake pedal out of our way. So first I'm gonna remove that spring. Next, we're gonna remove this pin from the brake pedal. There's a cotter pin on the other side and a washer. So keep an eye out for that washer. And we've got two bolts we're gonna take out. Now, before you take this off, keep in mind you have one more spring on the back. So I'm gonna rock this out to where we can work on it and disconnect the spring. Next thing we need to do is remove the Kickstarter. So I'm gonna move that all the way down. I've got a big wrench and some gloves just so I don't bust my knuckle. This thing's gonna be a little tight. There we go. And then to make sure we get this back on the same position, I'm just gonna put a little paint right here. And then if these are stuck, you can use some penetrating oil to help get those off. And then to remove this cover, we actually have the oil pump block off kit installed, but this normally under here is where your oil pump is. We're gonna remove that cover. Now, before we remove the cover, what we need to do is make sure we have the ceiling surface cleaned up around it. That way we don't drop any dirt in there when we take this off. But another thing we need to do before we remove it is drain the oil. So I'm gonna put my drain pan under and remove the drain plug. We're gonna clean the drain plug up, install the new crush washer, clean the ceiling surface on the case, and tighten down the drain plug. Next, we're gonna remove the mounting bolts in a crisscross pattern. Now, if you do still have your oil pump, you wanna get that disconnected before you remove those bolts. And you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to which bolts go where, because there will be a couple different sizes. Then we can pull this clutch cover off. I'm just gonna rock it back and forth a little bit. Should pop off and I'm gonna press on this shaft too because that's gonna stay behind. And we're getting lucky this gasket's coming off in one piece. Perfect, I'm just gonna finish ripping that off. And you wanna keep track of both of these dowel pins. So I'm gonna remove this one from the cover. It's gonna help with cleaning. And then this pin on our case, this one's actually stuck, so we're just gonna clean around it. Next, we're gonna remove the clutch springs and the bolts. We're gonna loosen these up in a crisscross pattern in two to three steps. And to help make it easier, I just put the bike in gear and you can apply the parking brake. Now, before you start removing parts, I just wanna point out, you wanna pay close attention to how everything comes off. And then the other thing, if that oil smells burned, then that's a pretty good indicator that these clutch plates are gonna be smoked. But ours doesn't smell burned, so we'll see what we find. So we pulled the pressure plate off. We're just gonna inspect everything as we go. 
So with the pressure plate, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this machined surface on the outside is smooth and there's no grooves in it. If it is, you're gonna to wanna to replace that. The next thing I'm gonna do, just to make sure we don't lose these parts, I'm gonna take a magnetic tip screwdriver. There's gonna be a ball down in here. So this magnetic tip on our screwdriver isn't quite strong enough to pull out that second push rod. So we've got this little magnet I realize not everybody has a magnet this small, but if you need to get it out, that's what you're gonna to have to do. Now, with this, if you don't suspect you're having any issues with it, you can probably just leave it in there. And main thing you wanna do is get that ball out of there, and that way you don't lose it. Now we're gonna remove this friction plate. So the wear limit on this is 2.8 millimeters. That's your minimum thickness that it should be. So if it's any thinner than that, or if any other plates in there are thinner than that, you definitely wanna get them replaced. So we're just gonna use that digital caliper to measure that. So we're at 2.95 millimeters. This one's fine, but we're gonna show you how to do this job anyway. Next thing you're looking at are the steels or these metal discs. And you know, ours look like they're in really good condition, but if there's any discoloration or bluing in these, you know they're probably warped and you wanna replace the whole clutch pack. Now with these steels, you'll notice this one is oblong. Now, the ones we're putting back in, they're all gonna be the same, but if yours look like this, there's gonna be a pattern that you assemble these in. So just be aware of that. We'll talk more about it later. And the other thing, if you're really concerned about these, you can use a surface plate and measure these for warpage. That stuff is outlined in your service manual, but we're not gonna worry about it. All we're looking for is discoloration. After that, we're just gonna start removing the frictions and the steels you can pay attention to the pattern of those stills as they come off. Okay, now this is the important one. We have two friction plates left. Um, you can see in here we have that judder spring that we're gonna remove. We're just using that magnetic tip screwdriver to do that. And depending on which clutch plates you're reinstalling, you may or may not reuse this judder spring. So this is the special clutch plate with the larger ID and the tab on these stills, it's making its way back around. And last, we have a friction. Next thing we're gonna check is the spring free length. So with that, they need to be above 30 millimeters. Ours are at 33. So these are actually good, but we did have those heavy duty springs that came in our kit, so we're gonna use those. The next thing we're gonna inspect is the clutch basket. So one of the main things we're looking at with this is for notches on those fingers right there. So this one, you can almost see a little bit of wear, but you can't really feel it. And a good way to check for that is install one of these friction discs and you can load them to one side or the other and slide this up and down. And if this catches on the notches, then you know the basket needs to be replaced. The other thing you can do, sometimes you'll get those notches on the splines of that hub. So you can do the same check with a steel plate. Our plate doesn't grab and we don't have any visible deep grooves. So the clutch hub and the clutch basket look okay on ours. The last thing we're gonna check on the clutch basket is that primary driven gear that's on the back. You don't want that to easily rock back and forth. There's some dampers on the backside. So, you know, you might get a little bit of movement with the basket on that, but if you can easily move the basket back and forth, then you're gonna to need to replace this whole thing. So ours is nice and tight, that is good. If you notice any issues with this, the way you replace it is you're gonna to have to use a chisel or a small screwdriver and bend that tab up on the lock washer. Then you're gonna use your clutch holding tool. You're gonna lightly clamp down on the clutch hub and remove that nut. When you go back together, again, you're gonna be using that clutch holding tool and this nut gets torqued to 58 foot-pounds, and then you're gonna use some channel locks to bend down the tab on the lock washer. The last thing we're gonna inspect is the push rods. So this one that's on the pressure plate side, you know, if you didn't pull out that second push rod and you see a lot of wear right here, you're definitely wanna, gonna wanna get this other one out and get them both replaced. They should be perfectly flat on the ends, like this one on the bottom. You know, this other side, that was going against that little ball. Both of these do have a little bit of wear, 
but it's not enough. We're gonna replace them yet. We'll probably do that the next time we replace the clutch. Now that we've taken a look at everything, we need to make sure all the gasket material is scraped from this crankcase as well as that cover. And then if you did burn up a clutch, there's probably gonna be some material left behind. So we wanna clean all of these parts off really well. And we are gonna be reusing this judder spring. Next thing we need to do is take the new friction discs and we're gonna coat these in oil. We just have a clean drain pan for that. Now we're gonna start with a friction disc, slide that on. Next we have that steel plate. So with these, these will have a rounded and a sharp edge. Just make sure they all stay in the same orientation. So for us, we're gonna have all the rounded edges coming to the outside. And then the other thing, you see how it's kind of oblong or oval right there. We're gonna have that tab at the top and then we're gonna work around and space those out evenly. Next thing we have is the judder spring. You need, this is very important. Make sure you have that friction disc with the larger inside diameter. That's gonna go on next with the judder spring. Then that next steel plate, we're gonna offset a little bit. And then the rest of these friction and stills are gonna be the same. And we're gonna end with that friction. After that, we're gonna install our push rod. You wanna make sure you have that coated in oil. And we have that steel ball after. And then the pressure plate with the other push rod on it. And this does need to be indexed. So that little dot at the top of this needs to line up with the dot in that clutch hub. So just make sure that's fully seated and sitting against those friction discs. And then we'll install our springs, the bolts, and we're gonna tighten those down in a few different steps in a crisscross pattern and then torque them to 4.3 foot pounds. The next thing we're gonna do is make sure the clutch actuating arm is adjusted correctly. So that's what that adjuster is in the end of the pressure plate. So to do that, we're just gonna disconnect our clutch cable from the actuating arm. And then right on the end of the actuating arm, there's a pointer. There's also a little notch on the case. And when you push this forward with your finger, both of those should line up. So if they don't, you're gonna to need to adjust that adjuster on the end of the pressure plate. Now, if the motor's trying to spin on you while you tighten that down, you can use that gear jammer to keep the motor from turning on you. And then, you know, the nut, you're only gonna be torquing that to 5.1 foot pounds, so don't go crazy with it. Now we're gonna make sure both dowel pins are in place and we're gonna position our gasket. I'm gonna apply a little bit of grease to our kickstart seal. Then we're gonna install the clutch cover. And as we slide this on, just be aware of the seal. Be gentle on that. And then as we put this on, just be aware, make sure that this is lining up with those dowel pins and make sure that it seats all the way on its own. Next, we're gonna install the bolts into the cover and we're gonna tighten those down in a crisscross pattern and torque them to 7.2 foot-pounds. Now, if your machine did have an oil pump, you wanna make sure that's reconnected at this point. But for us, we're just gonna reinstall this cover. And don't forget to install the bracket for that parking brake cable. Now we're gonna install the Kickstarter. We're lining up those paint marks. Then we're gonna install this nut. I'm putting a dab of blue Loctite on here just because these have a tendency, sometimes they can rattle loose. And that gets torqued to 47 foot-pounds. After that, we can reconnect our brake pedal. We'll reinstall the footrest, the heel guard, and our Nerf bar.
And last but not least, we can go ahead and fill the transmission with 650 milliliters of oil. And now we'll reinstall our cap. And that's everything you need to know to get the clutch plates replaced on your Yamaha Blaster. Now, if you need any clutch plates or other parts for your machine, check out our website. We have a lot of different options on there. We also have a lot of other how-to videos coming out on this Blaster. So check those out and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.